scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Lord is putting a crown in the head of his sister here. That's why I just paused because I was watching the vision. I saw a crown being put in the head of a particular sister here. And wherever that sister is, under the sound of my voice, I declare, please help them. Ushers, please be sensitive. You have to be spiritual, not just killed. You have to be spiritual. Hallelujah. Spirit break out Break our walls down Don't sing, just listen to me Spirit break out I'm speaking to your spirit man, not you Heaven come down It's not a special number Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out hey, Heaven come down I'll sing it one more time then I'll teach something is happening to your spirit Spirit break out is deep calling unto deep. Break our walls down. Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Listen, I'm about to teach you the secret of kings. This is a deep secret in the kingdom. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. Spirit break out. Break our walls down Spirit break out yeah. Heaven come down Psalms 89 from verse 20 to 24 Please be sensitive. I'm teaching on the anointing now. The third key to hosting revival. It says, I have found David, my servant. This is a word many of us don't like to hear. Because when you hear the word servant, it looks like it's an insult to sonship. It's not. 
The hallmark of sonship is servanthood. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who although he was equal with God, he proved his sonship by becoming a servant. Listen carefully. Please just help those under the anointing. We are soaking in such a cloud in this place. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. The anointing is not in the oil. Except if the oil is anointed by someone who is anointed. There are many oils in many homes that is just oil. With whom my hand, because of the anointing, shall be established. Read this. My arm shall also strengthen him. We're reading to verse 24. The enemy, because of the anointing, shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. 23. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. If you are a believer, read the last verse with me, 24. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his authority be exalted. I have found my servant. In the equation of greatness, there always is a point in a man's life where you encounter the anointing. What is the anointing? The anointing is God's ability to produce his dimension of results. God's own ability that enables a man to produce God's dimension of results. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, he said. For no man can do these things except, so there is a condition, God be with him. Are we together now? And Apostle Peter in chapter 10 and verse 38 of Acts, preaching in the house of Cornelius to the Gentiles, he said, how God, verse 10, chapter 10 and 38, how God, look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and with power. And he went about, say went about, say doing good. You don't do good just because you are compassionate. It takes more than compassion to do good. You have to be anointed to do good. The situations that plague men in our world and your life and your family require more than a good heart. You must be anointed. There are many pastors that love their members. They want to see them rise. They want to see them healed. They want to see them blessed. They are well intentioned. But the requisite level of anointing to make it happen is not there. That's why you came for this conference. Ah. Man of God, you need more than revelation and good speaking. At the back of it, there must be the grace for performance. The grace for performance is not the anointing that makes people fall down. No. They fell down when Jesus said, I am here, yet they were not changed. How shall these things be seeing that I know not a man Lord how will it happen he said the power of the highest that's how it will happen the messianic prophecy in chapter 61 of Isaiah the prophet saw please give it to us he said the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he had anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted you don't bind up the brokenhearted using a bandage it takes power to bind up the brokenhearted 
to proclaim liberty to the captives it takes more than good english i set you free now no sir no sir we've tried it again and again and we mocked ourselves and mocked god and the opening of prison to them that are bound look at these brothers and sisters reason with me that a man can i have just one gentleman you come please come reason with me please that a fine young man like this my brother here can be alive and happy walking walk with me yet he's in prison he's a graduate keep that scripture there this is the bible it's a messianic prophecy walk with me again 10 years into graduation he's still in prison he's moving physically but the bible says he is bound the woman who was bound 18 years was going to temp the temple she was a member of the synagogue verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort those who mourn you don't comfort those who mourn just by acting like oh you are just in a welfare department sorry eh? don't cry no no it takes the anointing to wipe tears not a handkerchief verse 3 we're reading down to 4 to appoint unto them that mourn in zion do you know what that means to fix a date for their breakthrough to give them beauty oh look at this so i look at this brother and all that is in his life is ashes the bible says to give them meaning you have it such as i have i have beauty and i can give a man for ashes the bible says the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness it says that they might be called the oaks or trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified we're reading to verse 4 last verse it says and they shall build the old waste not just with architectural skills with the anointing it says they shall raise up the former desolations they shall repair the waste cities even the desolations of many generations The anointing of the Holy Spirit are we together yes. we live in a wicked world if you are not anointed you will continue to flatter yourself until you are utterly defeated for 30 years Jesus kept working until the Spirit of God came upon him and then in Luke chapter 4 don't turn there but when you read from verse 15 he went to the temple and then the Bible says it was given unto him the scroll of prophet Isaiah and he read the scripture and when he said it he said this day is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes and then he saw a man with a withered hand and he said to prove to you that I have now become the Christ not just Jesus the son of Mary stretch your hands and all of a sudden, a miracle happened. And they marveled. What is this? Who is this? Brothers and sisters, it takes more than compassion to change your family. You won't just get back and say, I'm a Christian. No. And let me teach you something very powerful. There are many things I can say about the anointing. But I want to teach you, thank you, one operation of the anointing and then I tell you how it comes. You see, the anointing is in levels and dimensions. Say levels. Say dimensions. Levels meaning that you can have more of the anointing in the same dimension. For instance, a healing anointing. You can have a healing anointing and you can have a greater level of the same dimension, a healing anointing. Then you can have another dimension. There is the anointing for favor. There are all kinds of things. Are we together now? Please look at me. Your possibilities in this kingdom are determined not just by you being anointed, but the level and the extent of that anointing. So the Bible says how God anointed Jesus. So the issue was not that he was anointed. Look at the extent. The anointing works like money. 
Yesterday I used money. Can I use it again? This is 1,000 Naira. Is that true, Nigerians? If you come to me and say, I want to eat lunch, and I give you 1,000, your lunch is under 1,000, I presume. Are we together now? But if you want to buy a car, and I give you 1,000 Naira, 1,000 cannot buy the car. So you need more of the same thing. Now watch this. The same money that buys a car is the same money that buys lunch. But the quantity. You are not a blessing just because you are anointed. Pastors, listen. This is where we fool ourselves. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Hands were laid on me. How God anointed. How God anointed. You are not a blessing until you are unusually anointed. You can only solve the problems that are lower than your level of anointing. Listen, come again. I'm using money because I want you to understand. Let's assume that every challenge in this brother's life has um, a Naira equivalent of anointing. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying anointing is money. Are we together? <clears throat> Now, let's assume that this brother needs breakthrough. And let's say that breakthrough is 600 Naira dimension of anointing. You get my explanation? And this brother's wife needs a child. And this brother needs a healing. And this brother needs speed. You calculate everything in his life. And he needs 5,000 Naira dimension of anointing. And I come as a man of God invited. And I say in the name of Jesus, I set you free. It is only the problems that are within the level of anointing that will be solved. This is an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. Listen, by the grace of God, when it comes to teaching on the anointing, I'm teaching from my office, not revelation. The Bible says that every man minister, be careful when a naked man says, I want to give you a shirt. There are many people with no proof and no result bragging arrogantly. When it comes to the issues of the anointing, I tell you with all humility, I'm not careful to say this. This is an office. It's a call. That's it. That's why you find out that in almost every church and every Christian gathering, testimonies recycle. They are proof of the level of the anointing. When the, and when the man of God transits in the spirit, you will know there is a switch. Ah, one testimony of cancer, then another, then another, then another. You now know that something has happened. The miracles within that assembly will peck at the level of the grace of the vessel. Most of us men of God will not want to admit this because we lie to you like we have everything and can solve every problem. The remaining issues in your life, despite our praying for you, proves there is something wrong. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to make you hate the body, but I want to show you the truth. You are not a blessing if you are not truly, truly anointed. Look at this. This brother can come right now having a cancer. And I can say in the name of Jesus, I'm walking in the healing anointing. Be healed and jump and do all kinds of jamboree. If I'm a man of God, except God did not call me. All that pride we talk, at the end he's not healed. This guy goes to a Benihin meeting. Benihin stands on stage. He has not started praying. The cancer leaves. The difference is not God. How God anointed If you learn this about the anointing, then no matter how high you think you are anointed, you will still have the fortitude to say, Lord, there can be more. If you are a good shepherd and you look at your members, over time you can see that I've prayed for certain cases and nothing really changes. It's not because you don't love God. It's a truth you must admit with humility. And go and find out which vessel in the body has that grace level or that grace dimension that can bless you. These are deep truths about the anointing. I have seen people come to me 
and it's amazing how easy their challenges are when they are saying it I begin to smile not in pride because I know that the challenge that brought them is within the level of the grace that God has given me to solve and I laugh with them and in moments it's gone but I have also met certain cases over the years that even me after I prayed for the people I had to go on a retreat because I knew they would not get any result. You have to love God to admit this thing I'm saying because it will sting your ego. And we men of God will not truthfully admit. We would like to say, look, it's your faith that didn't work. It's a lie. When a patient gets to the hospital, you don't blame him for anything again. His assignment is to get to the hospital. Listen, I'm a man of faith. But it is not just faith, faith the way we say it. Because a dead man does not need faith to come back to life. I don't mean to remind you about your past. But some of us who come from very occultic backgrounds and villages... You will see a believer that they will say they concocted a charm. The person passed the charm and matched it. He didn't have faith in the charm. Yet the charm still started working. And then they will say, ah, what did you match? You matched charm. You are in trouble. The person was even singing, hallelujah. Hey. And then you matched charm. And the charm vetoed your praise and worship. And entered you and walked. Let me tell you this. Brothers and sisters, please, if you're a man of God here, I can kneel down and beg you. Let's open up our heart and truly learn what we may not know. Let's be careful when we make boastful statements. As men of God, we must let the members know we are also students in the school of the spirit. Just because we have gone ahead does not mean we have graduated. Let's be very sincere so we don't mislead people and create a theology that explains away our lack of result. And we keep blaming members. You don't have faith. You didn't give. You. It's not true. The members themselves, they respect us, but they know that something, this, this thing doesn't add up. God is not like this. Don't dishonor any man of God. Don't dishonor any church. I'm an advocate of honor, but I'm opening your eyes to make you truly see God. If we don't tell ourselves the truth, we may not find him. So this brother, I can bless him. Imagine, brothers and sisters, that the anointing that is about to come upon you shortly, some of you will get up and go home with running, not just, not, you will run home and say, Mama, I found it. And say, found what? Say, Mama, I found it. Ah! found what? I found the keys to open the heavens. They say, who is this one? They say, mama, you have been praying like that before you went for NYSE. Say, no, something happened. Something happened. And you say, in the name of Jesus, let the gates be opened. Something you are saying every day, but now you say it. All of a sudden, in two weeks, five of your brothers get jobs. Two of the ladies are engaged. And you turn, even you, you turn back and say, what happened? Listen, the more anointed we are, the more we reveal the true expression of God's possibilities. Our not being anointed will misrepresent the potentials that are in the Christ. This gentleman has had me preach about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for him, I pray for him, and nothing happens. He will go back believing that God cannot do that thing. The next time he hears a man of God saying, God is able to heal cancer, he will just laugh and not believe it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising there's an army rising up They will break every chain Break every chain Listen The first key 
to be genuinely anointed is engaging the mystery of prayer and fasting write it down thank you my friend I want you to be sensitive now please take it high for me Mike let's be sensitive now I want to pray Luke chapter 4 14 to 15 please quickly one of the major keys to stepping into dimensions of the anointing the power of the Holy Ghost is the ministry of prayer and fasting and Jesus returned in the power listen he went to the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost but returned in the power after 40 days he went to the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost remember you have to be anointed with the Holy Ghost and power it's not enough to be anointed with the Holy Ghost he went full of the Holy Ghost but after praying 40 days 40 nights he returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee and there went out what a fame of him all through the region round about 15 and he taught in their synagogues being glorified the ministry of prayer and fasting listen do not let anyone make you trivialize the power that is contained in prayer and fasting if and when done properly the art of prayer and travail listen let me tell you my brothers and my sisters there is no shortcut to this thing he spake a parable Luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint the Bible was talking about prayer in James chapter 5 and it says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous it says that it availed much and then the Bible says that Elijah was a man just like us but he prayed earnestly that there be no rain over a space of three and a half years and then when the time was complete he prayed again when men pray heaven moves when men pray their destinies move when men pray the flesh dies when men pray the glory comes i tell you this i'm a product of what prayer and fasting can do let the outer man perish but that you carry genuine spiritual power you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you were mighty on your throne You ancient iron skin, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You are mighty in this place, mighty in this place. You are mighty in this place. Listen, one of the graces that I trust the Lord to come upon you tonight, my brothers and my sisters, is the spirit of prayer and supplication. You need that grace. Man of God, pray twice. That that grace, let me tell you, train your members to pray. Train your members to fast and see the capacity of the spirit that they will carry have you not seen timid men and women go to the place of prayer and come out as lions there is no amount of counseling that will replace the power of prayer prayer and fasting number two 
The second key to receiving the anointing is impartation. This is where we we'll round off tonight. Please pay attention. Impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities. It's not just a transference of anointing. It's not just a transference of grace. Any dimension a man attains unto in the spirit is transferable under certain conditions. Are we together? Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9, please. And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him as, did, as the Lord did command Moses. Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom because he received an impartation. Ezekiel chapter 2. Very popular scripture. When you read from verse 2, really 1 and 2. The spirit of the Lord. Read 1, give us 1 and 2. And he said unto me, son of man, stand upon your feet and I will speak with you. But the guy was weak. He couldn't stand up by his strength. And then the miracle happened in verse 2. And the spirit entered into me. When he spake unto me, and that spirit set me up, you don't stand by desire. There is a grace you must receive that can bring you up. He said, stand up. And he could not. But the spirit entered me. When he spake unto me, and set me upon my feet. Listen to me. I am a product of not just an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, but I'm a product of many anointings. Anointings are like an address. You can know where it came from. In 2004, I desired so badly the grace that was upon evangelist Reinhard Bonke, and I heard that he was in Joss. And I came all the way. <laughs> Let me show you something. Please give us Habakkuk chapter 3. And verse 3 to 4. If you can give us amplified. Our time is gone but please be patient with me tonight. We are going to pray. I will not waste your time unnecessarily. God. The Bible says came from Taman and all of that and his glory covered the heavens and the earth was full of his praises. Let me show you a mystery. Verse 3, verse 4. I want you to read with me. One, two, read. And his brightness was like the sunlight ray. Rays stream from where? Stop. Rays stream from where? Read on. And there in the sunlight splendor was the hiding place of his power. The power of God has a location. It is hidden in his hands. So impartation is a system that transfers the power of God to a man, to a life, to an individual. But there is one law I must teach you. It's called the law of honor. That's the spiritual law allocated for receiving impartation. You never receive an anointing from a colleague. You never receive an anointing from a classmate. You've heard my message commanding results. Hebrews 7 verse 7. It's a mystery that has blessed the body. I will show you why many of you may be close to the most anointed people in the world and never receive Read with me, it's projected. One, two, read. Yet, it is beyond all contradiction that it is the lesser person that is blessed by what? Listen. The power of God never flows 
until you create that spiritual potential difference through honor. Here's what the Bible says. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what? A prophet's reward. You can receive a prophet in the name of your elder brother. You receive a hog and pocket money. That's a brother's reward. You can receive a prophet in the name of your roommate. You receive a warm place to stay and an opportunity to fetch his or her food. That's a roommate's reward. Before you ever receive, your first assignment is discernment. Who is this man? Not just as a man. Does Elijah had the sons of the prophet. He was a lecturer to them. He was mentoring them to become prophets. But Elijah said, mm -mm, you are not a man, you are a system. You are more than just an ordinary man. Are you aware that God is going to take your master? Yes, we know. But... And Elisha followed. And when it was time to receive, he said, tell me quickly what you will have me do. He said a double portion. He said, you have asked a hard thing. However, if you can see me, was he not looking at him already? He's not talking about physical sight. He that has an ear, not everybody has that ear. He that has these eyes. That means if you can discern what I represent, that I'm not just a man, I represent a spiritual system. All of a sudden, chariots came. It is appointed unto men to die once. So when a man is flying and going, he's more than a man. Do you discern this? And when he saw it, he said, My father, my father, the chariots of heaven and the horsemen thereof, the mantle came. Wow. When he caught it and went to the Jordan, where is the Lord God? The water did not part for Elijah. The water did not part for Elisha. The water parted for whoever carried that mantle. Your possibilities are defined by the levels and the dimensions of the anointing. So meetings like this are a system of spiritual upgrade to bring you into a deeper level. And that's what we're going to do now. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. One of the reasons why we never receive from men of God is because of dishonor. There is a lot of dishonor in the body of Christ. The mantles of the generals are still on earth. Mantles don't leave earth to heaven. Dishonor shrouded them, waiting for a time appointed when a generation can discern enough. Are we together now? Every mantle you ever read about in this Bible is still on earth. Our attitude of dishonor is what has made us close. That's why I taught you yesterday that if you dishonor the body, there are realms you will never enter. Because there are anointings. I once met a woman. I consider myself to be a student of the Bible. I was ministering in a PFN crusade in Kano. A conference. And all of a sudden, I saw this woman. And the woman looked at me. And she said she finishes her Bible every 15 days. It's an anointing. She's an intercessor. Doesn't do anything. I felt like kneeling down to say, my God, what did you say? Please, that grace quickly. Now, I want you to listen because you are about to receive now. I went to Joe's for in her bonkers crusade. And all of a sudden, that man was here preaching like I'm preaching in this conference now. I was in the crowd of people. And you know his crusade, you stand, you don't sit. My goodness, was I tired. But I insisted. By the next day, I felt I had not honored that man enough. So I said, at least I will join the workforce. I saw them pushing people on wheelchairs and doing this. I said, can I help? They said, no, you must be trained. I said, training or no training, I must join. I came all the way from far. I didn't come to play games. Look, when you are desperate for something, nothing else matters. Like someone tonight needs to be desperate. When Reinhard Bonke preached, I was already in ministry. 
very simple message as his manner is I would have sat down there and said what kind of cheap nonsense revelation are you doing? I need it oh God when you want something you set your face like a flint you've heard it in my teachings there was a pregnant woman who was standing by me she came for the crusade too every once in a while she will lean on me at one point I said ah, madam I'm not the owner of the which one is all this one I came to it with, with passion in my heart I stood on that ground for six hours I refused to be tired when Reinhard Bonke finished preaching he was about to take water so that he will minister the baptism of the Holy Ghost and then my eyes were open and all of a sudden I my first time of seeing the visible manifestation of the Holy Ghost I saw a bird not not just some I didn't even know I was in a vision the wings were tied with silvery bands it was hovering round I said my God what is this the bird will be bigger than this building hovering round and the Spirit of God took me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 and the Spirit hovered round and the Spirit of God taught me the secret to the miraculous that it is the union of the word and the movement of the spirit not the presence the movement of the spirit that births miracles when I came back from that vision I had backed the stage I didn't even know I had turned around something came upon me I knew that I got it I can share with you various encounters in my life Prophet Kobus Van Rensburg before he died of blessed memory in South Africa I, I kept searching for people who had met God's generals because every time I read about them I felt like I was reading about my family I would cry reading about them and I tried I found only two people Robert Lairdan and then Kobus Van Rensburg I heard that he had met with Lester Sumro and Lester Sumro met with Smith Wigglesworth and Smith Wigglesworth left a command and said don't die with your anointing make sure you find young men and transfer this anointing and I said wow they went down to John Lake and several people and then I traveled to South Africa to go and see him to talk with him some of these people you met what did they tell you my hunger took me there hello Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.